the new Wahoo Kicker Move adds eight inches of fore aft travel to what was already a pretty good smart trainer. So does this make it better or just more? I had a chance to ride this for a few minutes at Steamboat Gravel this year. Wahoo had set up shop uh, just around from the start finish and had invited a few media under a non-disclosure agreement to come hop on a bike. So did so on flat pedals and spun around on it. You know, did some sprints and high cadence, low cadence, trying to get a, a feel for the thing. How the thing works is it sits in a curved trough. So gravity basically brings it back to center and, you know, standing up, you know, the bike can move somewhat naturally underneath you. And if you, you know, really uh, throw the bike back and forth, it goes the full eight inches of travel and gravity brings you back down to the, the center of the trough. As with the regular kicker, which continues in Wahoo's line, the kicker move has a small amount of lateral flex and it can be height adjusted for a variety of wheel sizes and does not require a front wheel block. So why have four aft movement at all? Wahoo says this is to mimic the feel of riding outside. This is not new. We've seen this before with things normally called rocker plates. You know, Saris for one has something like this where you mount a smart trainer on, you know, a, a giant surfboard looking thing and there's four aft movement and uh, a bit of side to side. The side to side on this is not nearly as much as a rocker plate. You know, it's more to the tune of you know, a centimeter or so. The axis feet, which consists of, you know, height adjustable and uh, different durometers of squishy feet uh, continues with the kicker move. I've tested a couple dozen smart trainers over the years, mostly for bike radar and a little bit at Velenews. And initially I thought that a fully rigid trainer was best, you know, for power transfer, I suppose. The Kinetic Rock and Road was an early trainer that had a whole lot of side to side with some spring to it, and that felt to me nothing <laughs> like riding a bike outside. But you know, I came to appreciate the feel of a little bit of movement, you know, not so much at the hub, but just you know, at the saddle with trainers like the Tax Neo 2 and then the Tax Neo 2T, uh, and then this latest version 5 iteration of the Kicker Move because. When you ride a bike outside, your bike isn't, you know, perfectly perpendicular all the time. There's a little bit of movement, and I think that ultimately makes for a more comfortable ride. So I think having a little bit of movement, as long as the bike to trainer interface is solid, is generally a positive thing. You know, imagine if your saddle on your bike outside did not move at all, and any movement you had on your body would be, you know, kind of exacerbate the sit bone to saddle interface compared to how your bike does move outside where your saddle moves a bit and thereby reduces the the movement and friction of the sit bone to saddle interface so that to say i think a little side to side movement is a positive thing but again that's not the big news here it's the the fore aft is that a positive thing can be you know i've appreciated some of the feel of rocker plates like the the saris big board. The Wahoo Kicker Move is $1,600, 1,600 euros, and 1,400 pounds. That's $300 more than the standard Wahoo Kicker. For me, the question isn't so much the price as it is the space. I've appreciated the, the feel of rocker plates that have a bit of fore and aft, but I do not appreciate the giant footprint that it takes up. I don't have the real estate in the garage when it's being used, and certainly when they're being stored. One thing I like about this guy is it folds up pretty tidily when not in use. One leg up the kicker move has on those rocker plates is the lockout switch. You know, it's a big plastic toggle on, toggle off switch that sits, you know, basically right underneath the bottom bracket. And it's easy enough to kick that with your foot without having to get off the bike. Standing up and then sitting back down does feel more natural on the kicker move than a fixed smart trainer. Is that enough to warrant the cost of the increase in space and the increase in mass? That's for you to decide. Wahoo is also coming out with a new cheaper kicker bike, the Kicker Bike Shift, which is $3,000 to the full $4,000 of the top end kicker bike. The Kicker Shift does not have the auto you know, elevation adjust that its more expensive sibling has. Back to the kicker move. The internals are all the same as the 
you know, existing unit here, 2200 wattage max, a claimed accuracy of plus or minus 1%, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Ant Plus. Wahoo Kicker is my favorite smart trainer. It's easy to use, it's quiet, it's accurate, uh, it's easy to fold up and tuck aside. And it's got just a, you know, a little bit of movement for comfort. I'm happy with how this thing feels for riding Zwift and racing Zwift. Zwift Racing League's coming up. The kicker move does seem to have a bit more side to side. Again, just based on my one 10 minute ride on flat pedals there at Steamboat. I'd be curious to jump on that thing more for some rides and certainly for some racing. I wonder if that uh, toggle on toggle off switch would be something that people would use for sprints and then they'd uh, flip it back to the open position for the rest of the race or for normal riding. I obviously can't speak to long-term you know, durability or any other long-term issues. As far as noise, because everything else is the same, I would guess the decibel range would be the same. You know, the sliding fore and aft, you know, adds nominal noise. Certainly adds costs, another 300 bucks and some weights. And again, the, the bigger overall footprint I see is you know, the biggest downside to this unit. So what do you think? Is this something that would be of interest to you? What's your favorite smart trainer? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And if you're riding outside or inside, enjoy the ride.